Hey, this is Scott, and today I just want to show you this fairly compact V-mount powered GH4 setup with pieces from Smallrig and the batteries from Bebob V-micro batteries. So with the GH4 or especially the GH5, a lot of people really want to power it for longer or you know, possibly power some other accessories. So they're resorting to using V-mount batteries. Uh, but with such a small camera, people often comment that it seems pretty unbalanced and kind of defeats the purpose of a small camera. But I do get the reasons for wanting to power this with a V-mount battery. Sometimes you want longer battery life for whatever reason. If you're on a shoot and it's hectic, you don't want to have to pay attention to how much battery you have left or worry about running out in the middle of, you know, doing something. Or if you want to put it in a tripod and shoot for a long time, especially with the GH5, you can kind of do never-ending recording. Longer power provided by a V-mount battery could be very, very useful. This one in particular here is the 45 watt hour from uh, Bebob, and it will power probably about four times as long as the native GH4 or GH5 battery, uh, but they do also have a 98 watt hour version and a 150 watt hour version of this V-micro series, which I'll show you in just a minute with a slightly different setup than this, but um, this is really, really compact, and as you can see, the battery kind of ends up being about the same profile as the size of the camera, so it doesn't take up an unnecessary amount of space. It's very light. This is 0.3 kilograms for this one in particular. The heaviest is 0.7 uh, kilograms, just over that. So it keeps the weight down, keeps the size down, but still you get the benefit of longer battery life. The reason that I'm just using this here is to take advantage of the smaller size of these batteries. If you use a larger V-mount uh, plate, you will get the advantage of having additional outputs uh, than just what's on the battery, but it obviously takes up more space and ends up weighing a little bit more. With this, you could also attach it to a cheese plate and put that in some different configuration as well. But again, I wanted to really take advantage of the size of these small batteries, and this seemed like the best way to do it, especially if you're only powering the camera and you only need this D-tap, um, which I'll go over all these parts in a second. It really is a great way to do this. And again, I'll show you one more setup with the larger battery in just a second. So just to show you these parts, I'll go kind of backwards here. I have a D-tap to a dummy battery plugged into the D-tap on this V-Micro, and that is from GyroVoo. So uh, to take it out from here, I have to remove the camera from this setup. So I'll leave that in there for now. But uh, this is just a D-tap to dummy battery cable, and I'll put the link down in the description below if you're interested. It works with the GH3, GH4, GH5, and I've used it with, this is the GH4, and of course also with the GH5, and it works great. I have that plugged into the twist to D-tap, and again, you can plug this in in either direction, so if you want to plug it in uh, facing this way or facing this way, you can use this twist D-tap both ways, which is kind of convenient. You also have this USB out here, um, but then that's just straight onto this V-mount plate. Uh, V-mount clip, I'm not sure the exact name. I'll put, again, the link to this down below in the description from Smallrig. And I put this sideways because, again, I wanted to take advantage of the smaller size of this. As you can see, it does protrude a little bit below the plate, I guess, if you're talking in terms of which direction the battery is going. So if I put this facing straight up, this would come out a little bit down below the camera, which is also fine, but I wanted to try and keep everything in more or less the same profile. And this more or less matches what the camera is doing, so I decided to put it this way. Um, the only downside of that, if you can see here, is that this plate does slightly block the holes of the 15 millimeter uh, rod clamp that I have it attached to. So this is gonna go right on the end of your rods. It's not gonna be able to adjust really. So you'll have to adjust the rods themselves to change the position of this. Uh, but for me, it works just fine. So that's how I have it set up right now. Um, this plate, uh, as it as it is, is really useful. It has tons of different screw holes in here, so you could mount it in a number of different ways to 15 millimeter clamps or to, like I said, a cheese plate or to whatever other configuration you might have. And there's a lot of versatility in it. One thing that I do wish is that there were screw holes kind of on the bottom side so you can connect this directly onto the bottom like you do with this cheese plate. So um, that would be very, very useful if you could do that on here as well, directly on here. But for now, it works just fine. If I lay it down flat, then I feel like it's kind of wasting space because it's so thin and there'd be kind of a lot of dead space up here. But you can do that if you want more access to this area of the camera. If you're using the thicker, larger 150 watt battery, that might be a better setup. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that now. So I just have a couple of screws in here connecting this to these 15 millimeter rod clamps. And as I take them out, I can reposition this uh, 15 millimeter rod clamp here 
in a way that lets me attach this in a different position. So take those screws out. And what I want to do now is attach this right at the bottom of these holes here so that way I can kind of lay it down flat. And once I get the battery on there, I think you'll see why that's kind of a better setup for the larger 150 watt hour battery from Bebop. So um, I'll go ahead and slide the battery on first, so that way you can really see, um, as I do it, kind of the advantage. So this one is much thicker, so if I have it standing up, it's going to take up that space. But if I lay it down, it will end up being just about a similar height to the height of the camera, so it's not really as much of a waste of space. So just to slide that right on there, and I could adjust these rods to get this to fit better. Um, but since the holes of that 15 millimeter clamp are not blocked, you could adjust this position on the rods if your rods come out further, or if you're using this with a bigger camera. Um, and you know, it doesn't take up a whole lot of extra space compared to the camera. I mean, considering this is a 150 watt battery and this will run a GH4 for hours and hours and hours, probably a full day um, of recording, of straight recording. So I don't think you really need this large battery, but if you do, you can use it like this. Um, and the low profile and general, you know, small size, I think will allow you to have a lot of power with a very small footprint compared to what people typically do with larger V-mount batteries and V-mount plates. Even if you do want to use a battery plate, still these are very light and very compact. So I think no matter what your setup is, these are definitely worth considering when you want to have a, you know, as much of a low profile and low weight camera setup as you can. And they're also easy to pack away. So they're easy to bring a bunch with you if you need to. So I do have a review, a proper review of these batteries as well. If you want to check that out, I'll have a link for that as well in the description as all of these parts that I have here so you can check out their availability and their pricing. Um, but overall, it's a relatively cheap setup. And again, it's the best way, in my opinion, to give a lot of power for smaller cameras like the GH4 and GH5. If you have any other questions or comments, as always, leave them down below. I'll get back to you. If you like this video, find it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it if you want. And as always, thank you for watching.